The final hour of sliding of the BMW IBSF four-man bobsleigh World Cup. The chase for the Crystal Globe ends here in the most historic of them all, the only natural track on the planet at Samaritz in Switzerland. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Samaritz. Martin Haven and alongside me, Anne van Uyenhaus. And I don't even know where to start about what's happening in this race. Let's look at the top three. It is such an interesting race. In third position, we have the Latvian driver, Oskar Skibermanis. He fosses the started. He started the fastest of all of them with a five flat, drove himself into third position, two tenths of the lead. In second position was Justin Cripps. He did a thrilling run, really fast down the track, highest top speed of all the sled, drove himself from fifth start time to second downtime, only 15 hundredths of the lead. Incredible run from Justin Cripps. And in the lead, we have Johannes Lochner. He was our two-man winner yesterday, and he did just the same as he did in the two-man. Started second fastest, had the highest velocity coming out of that first kink, and just drove himself into the lead. Only a small mistake at the bottom of the track. It was the only thing we could see, but the rest of the run was just just perfect. And he's uh, 15 hundreds ahead of his uh, first uh, competitor. And most amazing thing, I think, is the Chinese guy well, in fifth yeah, position. Lochner's sort of not the story. And Friedrich down in seventh. He must finish in the top six to take the Crystal Globe. But Li Chunjian. In Pyeongchang, he was a brakeman for Xiao Yijun, who he's racing against here. Xiao there in 14th place. Lee has completed exactly five races officially. One in Park City, two in Koenigsegg, and three in Innsbruck. He has done his five tracks in two years to qualify for the World Cup. And he is not just somewhere in the field. He's fifth, and he's ahead of Francesco Friedrich. I, I, I can't... Under, uh, understate this. It's ridiculous how good he was in his first drive at this level. Yeah, he really consistently drove himself up the field, started 10th fastest, dropped a little bit out, out of that first kink, but then drove himself from 9 to 7 to 6 to 5. It's, it's amazing what he did in the track. He was start number 20, so yeah. the last half, um, maybe that's a little bit of the St. Moritz magic happening, a late start draw that helped him. Agreed, but possibly. Let's, let's see if we can reproduce it in the second run and yeah. hold on to that amazing fifth position. <laughs> exactly right. Well, um, among the names that everybody will be familiar with, it's Hansi Lochner that leads, Justin Cripps in second, and Oscar Kubermanis in third. Kubermanis was the bronze medalist here last year. Hansi won two years ago. Cripps has never had a four-man medal here. Benny Myers in fourth. His best result is a silver medal here four years ago. And in fifth place, Lee Chun-Jan. Nico Valter in sixth is only four hundreds ahead of Francesco Friedrich. And in fact, Lee is only a tenth ahead. So realistically, Friedrich should be able to overhaul them both, finish in the top five, claim the, claim the Crystal Globe. If he's sixth, it's enough. If he's seventh, it's not. If he if is sixth... If Hansi wins it. If Hansi wins it. And, and again, you know, after the first heat, all bets are off. Second and final heat of the eighth race of the four-man bobsleigh World Cup season. The season finale getting underway here in Samaritz in Switzerland. Martin Haven and Anne van Uyenhaus still slightly shell-shocked after a dramatic first heat. 20 sleds to go, and we will know in the end of this hour who our World Cup champion is, the winner of the Crystal Globe. To get us underway, though, first of all, Suk Yun Jin of Korea. Oh, and a big skid there coming out of that first kink. Still has to get his push bar down. 5.18, same start time than they did in the first heat. He was a little bit unstable all of his first heat. Um, let's see if his setup is better for this uh, slightly warmer weather now in the second heat. Well, it is warm. It's now overcast. It's not sunny. Rain is on the way. You can feel the moisture in the air, rain or snow and or whichever. And so we have no idea now what the track is going to do. We expect it normally to get quicker and quicker during the day. No idea whether it will or not. It was looking stable until the exit of Dixon and then skidded a little bit going into Horseshoe. It looks like he's got it back under control, but there again, skidding into Nameless. 118, we'll see 120 kilometers an hour, or at least we expect to. Late there, and that's why he's high and hits that wall coming out of Gunter Sachs. 
And again, 140. We saw 147s at the bottom of the track in the first heat. Uh, his first heat was a 106.65. That's a 106.55. Uh, didn't look any prettier, did it, I'm afraid? It's uh, it's not a track. Sook's only raced here once before in the World Cup, and that was last year. And uh, I'm not sure that he's feeling the love a little more for the track this year. Yeah, his top speed was three kilometers per hour slower than his first heat, so it doesn't look like he had a lot of speed in his sled. Don't know if it's the track or his drive at the bottom. And there we saw that skid, and then getting the push bar in. Well, he gave us a good indication of where all the mistakes are going to be made and where we can look for, because again, late off Dixon, we'll see a lot of that. Late off Dixon and then skidding to Horseshoe and then late hide there in Gunter Sachs and hitting you saw, that wall. You saw all three brakeman's helmets bouncing up in the air there. That's a yeah. lot of energy. That's 300 kilos of meat being bounced. Well, next up, second of our starters in this final heat is Ivo de Bruyne of the Netherlands. They had a great two-man race yesterday. We're a little bit unlucky with their early start draw. Today, they were number two and now second off again. 521, 300 improvements and a good first kink and looking stable in that second kink as well. A little bit uh, slower than uh, so. So we can hear the track announcer when you're in the sled, and you can hear the track announcer as well. This is such an unusually quiet track. It is so quiet, and definitely in the beginning of this track, this first kink, it's just a really long straightaway, and you're so focused to keep it in the middle, and you can actually hear uh, some track announcing going on. Heading down to Horseshoe, got a nice medium line. Very stable line, Nash Dixon, and a much better exit of Horseshoe than he had in the first run. A little high there and drifts going into Devil's Dyke. Little skiddy, he's going to need speed at the bottom of the track. He's just a fraction quicker than Suk Hyun Jin of Korea. But late going there in Gunter Sachs as well, but controls it well. A little skid going into Martino. Oh, and that's a little bit of a whip going into Martino. Going to be very close at the line, but he's not in front. 106.76, so the Korean stays in the leader's box. Well done to the Koreans, our yeah. coach Tom De La Hansi. Well, last year he had his best ever result here in four man in 11th. Yesterday his best ever two man result here, a seventh place finish. But today, time to drive to uh, to training in Altenburg, yeah. I think. Here, nice high line and horseshoe. And then takes it off, brings it back to neutral. And then here you can see he was a little bit long on leap, and that's why he's going late to Gunter Sachs. Hitting that right wall, going in, and then controlled it, but then skits going into Martino. So he's offering his congratulations to the Koreans who are our race leaders as we get a little bit of noise at the start. Hubschweitz for Mikkel Kwonen, World Cup rookie. Yesterday made his two-man debut, today his four-man. Kai Tedeschi, the tall guy at two, as far as I can ascertain, his first ever bobsleigh race. And Brad Hall, who was actually in 18th position, he's not starting because his back is too bad yeah. to get a second run in. So Brad Hall scratches from the race, and Mikael Kwonen. <gasps> and a big slip there, not getting it. Oh, oh, and this is going to hurt a lot. They're trying to get him in around that first king, 519, and that's a big upset for the Swiss driver. Well, a real shame for Mikael Kwonen and his crew. I hope nobody, nobody got hurt. It looked like the Greatman got stuck between yeah. the sled and the wall, and I hope no one got injured in that process. The great news is it is so long out of that little first kink before you get to any real corners. There is time for everybody to stand up, get set, and get back down in again. Well, the worst that's going to happen is they will finish in 19th place. But Mikael Kwonen drove really well yesterday in the two-man, drove very decently again in the four-man, and again, good Good lines here. And producing really good speed at this part of the track. And it's a Quicker shame. than De Bruyne's sled. Yeah, it's a shame that he had this mishap at the start because yeah. he's driving really good lines down the bottom. He's catching up again on the, yeah. the Korean sled. Only his second year of driving started last season. Really good lines at the bottom of the track. Yeah. Too bad he had that mishap at the start. Well, great effort from Mikael Kwonen to put all that behind him. And he came from 5,800s back to 3,600s back in the bottom half of the track. Once he had got the sled back online, they were good. That's a really good job. Yeah, so Kai Tedeschi, Mark, Marco Durig, and Marco Tanner are the crew. I think he did get hurt. Yep, yep. yep. 
And so it slips off yeah. the bunk, doesn't get onto the bunk, and that's what's hurt his ankle. It's right there. Well, I think it's the number three guy that's who got Kai. hurt. Actually. Yeah, and yeah. he's he's getting hauled in by Marco Durig, and then Marco, watch his foot slip off the bunk. Kai's trying to get in. And now I think he will get this number three guy will get crushed between the set yeah. and the wall. Yeah. Well, again, and you can see his foot getting yeah. caught there it's on the just runner. Twisting the ankle and yeah. Wow, good job for the guys to get in anyway. He will get some points out of this race. Absolutely. And he showed great potential as yeah. a driver, really got it back together at the rest of the track. Great and, speeds at the bottom. And listen, you know, every time people get in neatly, it's like halfway to a miracle because it, this is not easy by anybody's standards. Well, next up, Roman Heinrich with Jeremy Bouterin, Dorian Oteville and Jerome Laparal on the back of the sled. They lay in 16th position, and their advantage over our current leaders was two tenths of a second. Clean load, little abrupt, 518, a little slower than their first heat, but nice and straight out of that first kink and out of the second kink. You can actually see the sled being led by the tram lines that other sleds have left. And again, the ice here is so hard normally that never happens. Yeah, and you really have to be focused there as a driver to not get caught in one of the lines, not get dragged to one of the walls. Um, so you need to be full, full focus there. Just a tiny drift, but corrects it well going into Dixon and a nice straight line in the middle of the track going into Horseshoe. Good exit there. Looks a little less skiddy than he did in the first heat. Hasn't quite got the speed of Mikael Kwonen, but he's as quick as the Korean sled. Right there, nameless, and then drops his back runner there, going into Tree and Bridge. Very good speed. Late oh. going into Gunter Sachs. We've seen so many sleds do it. It's, yep. it's quite tricky this year. Leap Gunter Sachs. Got enough in hand to take the lead away from the Koreans. So he is in the lead with a 106.47 compared to a 106.36. Normally that rhythm in those four right hand curves, the three bridge leap, Gunter Sachs, um, they're, they're equal rhythm and you should drive them all in the same way. But this year it seems like um, leap and Gunter Sachs are a little bit shaped mm. differently. So that's why we see a lot of sleds stay on there long and it pushes them late into the entrance of Gunter Sachs. And that's why he hits the wall there but goes nice and straight then down to Martino. And there's such long corners when you're walking the track, but the speed you're doing there, you know, <laughs> 125, 130 kilometers an hour and accelerating, they're very short. Roman Heinrich leads from Sugin Jun and Ivo de Brown. Five sleds down, 15 to go in Samritz. Eighth and final four-man bobsleigh World Cup race of the season. Our current leader, Frenchman Roman Heinrich. Next up is Austria's Marcus Trichel, only his fifth four-man race of the season. Marcus is still pushing with a broken foot, so he's doing a great job. Yeah. 5-12, gets around it, just avoiding that wall. 100 quicker than their first start, and best exit speed of all the sleds we've seen so far. 12th place finisher in the four-man race last year. That's his best in Samaritz. A little bit too much pressure coming out of wall, and that's why he hits that right wall before the take-on of Snake. And then a good control out of Sunny. Nice straight line heading into Nash and Dixon. Again, like in the first heat, the back of the sled not skidding around as many others were. Yeah, it's looking very stable. Good speed coming out of Shamrock and their tiny drift going into Devil's Dyke. So if he can keep it clean in these fast four right-hand corners, then he could have a big lead at the line. Marcus Trichel could be speed. moving up. And a good exit there, much more control than the previous sleds. Four tenths clear. Little down on speed to Mikael Kwonen, but not to Heinrich, the leader. Half a second up, 105.97 compared to 106.35. So that's four tenths of a second of an improvement. Yeah, and he had 100 lead over Heinrich, and he extended it to half a second. Yeah. That was a big second heat for Marcus Trichel. As you say, pushing still with that broken foot. And that's there, a little mistake, a little bit too much pressure coming out of wall, but he stayed on the right side, and there, tiny drift going from Shamrock to Devil's Dyke. And here he managed to stay on that left wall, 
not going late into Gunter Saxon that set him up nicely and that's straight away down to Martino. And I wonder he's got a big smile on his face, so he should do. That was a good drive. I can see him move up. His best here, 12th place last year. He could match that. Well, next up is Xiao Yi Jun. In the Olympic Games in 2018, he was the driver, and his brakeman, or one of his brakemen, is uh, Li Chun Jan, who is fifth after the first heat. So Xiao just one hundredth behind the silver medalist from those 2018 games. Great opportunity for him to move up as well. He was only 200 in front of uh, Marcus Streichel, who just put down a great run. Ooh, and a tiny drift there, hitting oh. the wall and hitting it again. 519. Got pinballed uh, down the straight a little, but he didn't panic, didn't overdrive it. But already two tenths lost compared to Marcus Streichel. Little touch there, just like we saw the Austrian driver do. Pierre Ludis and Andre Lange are coaching these young Chinese athletes. They really are bringing them on so fast. Yeah, they're helping a lot. And they also have the great mechanics, Fabio and Hans Sully. Yeah. We're back at their home track, actually. It's Swiss mechanics. Absolutely. Top of the field. But for Xiao, this is only his first four-man World Cup race here, raced here in the Junior Worlds in 2018. That's his only other visit to this track. Already three tenths back and lacking a little bit of speed compared to the Austrian. Yeah. And a drift there coming out of Gunter Sachs as well. Well, they still have decent speed at the bottom, four fastest sled, but he is going to be second at the line. So he is ahead of Roman Heinrich. Marcus Treichel and his crew stay in the leader's box. Again, we see how few World Cup races he's got, how far behind some of the rivals in the pack that he's racing with are he is in terms of experience. It's, it's remarkable what these Chinese drivers are producing. Yeah, they're learning fast and they're doing it well. They're a little bit too long in the first kink and then drifting, hitting right and left and then back to the nice straightaway. Same mistake like a lot of people coming at a wall with a little bit too much pressure and then hitting the right side and there Gunter sucks as well. Well, Xiao in second with 13 sleds remaining, so he'll be no worse than 15th. His previous best World Cup race, 16th place in Lake Placid early in the season, a track he knew well. So again, good progress. And he was just a hundredth behind this man, Yun jong won of Korea, who was our Olympic silver medalist, along with Nico Valta in their home games in Pyeongchang. Marcus Treichel, you would have to think, only 300s behind, has got a good chance maybe of picking off the Koreans as well. Yon yeah. was struggling in his first heat. 5.15, just avoiding that left wall. Good driver run, that first kink. And that's good his velocity. 300s lead gone. Yeah, but a good velocity, mm -hmm. a little bit faster than Marcus Strachel at that point, so he has a possibility to come back from that, that disadvantage now. The gap first to second between Trichel and Xiao of China is four tenths of a second, so there's a big gap that one may be dropping into a few hundreds of a second behind, but it's a little tidier than his first run. Good controlled run, nice height there in horseshoe, nice exit, but the gap is still growing and it doesn't have the same speed as the Austrian there. Tiny drift going into Devil's Dyke, keeps it straight to nameless, and he's just lacking a little bit of speed. Leaving a little bit of time. Every oh, clock late is there, and he's going to be high, hitting that wall, but nice and straight down to Martino. Was 1100s back, but that's going to be two tenths of a second. He will be second ahead of Xiao Yi Jun. Three tenths of a second. That final hit really took speed out of the sled. And that was a great run from Marcus Streichel. Yeah. <laughs> what we've seen the other sleds do so far. Well, how far ahead was 12th place? Uh, 8800 behind the leader. Trika was 9400s. That's not much of a only, margin, is it? Only 600. See, so you yeah. might get another sled. And here, long, long on leap. And that's why he's late and goes late into Gunter Sachs, gets late height, hits that wall. Okay, so it is still Marcus Trichel who leads as we get into our top 12 sleds. In 12th place was the first man on ice this morning, Maxim Anginov. Uh, he didn't benefit much from that. You rarely do here in Samaritz, even when the weather is normal. 
And it's uh, really not normal this weekend. Andrianov then, 8,800s off the lead, 1,800s out of the tie for the top 10. So really for him, although he's going to try and find some speed to move up, the danger is actually that Tricol is going to go streaking past him. He showed a great looking run in the first one, so I hope he can produce a little more speed now, not being the first off. 5.14 and a great drive around that first kink. Highest velocity. And very good looking line around that second kink as well. Nice and middle heading into wall. So saw a little bit but of the athletes reshuffling themselves into the sled. That's yeah, where you can do it. Already 800s in the red though. Yeah. And he is bleeding time now. Wow, how can he be two tenths down with such a neat and tidy run? No skids, and maybe that's the answer. A little skid there, mm. and a lower line in horseshoe. But he's just bleeding time away. I don't think this setup is working really no. well in this second heat for him. Not at all. He's out to fourth place already, behind Tricol, one, and Shao. Little skid there. Now he's dropped behind Roman Heinrich on the splits. One, 19 kilometers an hour. Nice and tidy run, but now well, he, it looks like he's having some speed. Great speed at the speed. bottom, but... What on earth was going on for the other 1,600 kilometers, no, uh, meters, rather? <laughs> Tricol and his team rehearsing their giffies for next week, maybe 106.62. Dropped four places. And four tenths of a second slower than his previous run. Good looking push, good velocity out of that first kink, and still somehow was bleeding time mm. all the way down. 3,300 slower, and it didn't look like there was all yeah. those big mistakes. There was a tiny drift heading into Horseshoe, but we haven't seen him make a lot of mistakes. Well, we saw Lochner make more mistakes than that and still be flying into the lead. Yeah. Whereas Anginov has just dropped to fifth with 11 sleds to go. So in 11th place, or rather tied for 10th, Dominic Dvorak of the Czech Republic. Well, his best existing result here, 23rd from uh, a couple of years ago, 2016, his first as a driver, got DQ'd out of last year's race. So that doesn't count. This is 28th four-man race as a driver. They got to a 5.11 in the first run. Normally, they're a very fast-pushing team. 5.13, just a little bit slower. But neat and tidy off the first corner, so no problems in kink one. Very good control there, and you can see the lines are pushing him a little bit in that straightaway. Mm. And then taking that little tap and tiny skip going into snake one, and you can see the brakeman jumping up a little bit going into snake two. And he's losing a little bit of his advantage. Keeps it off the wall from Dixon to Horseshoe. Medium high line there. A little bit off of speed. Ooh, skip there as well, going into Devil's Dyke. Tricol in the leader's box is holding his breath, but he can see this is another spot coming his way. Only 700s in front, 120.5, little quicker than the Austrians. Lead there, going to Gunther Sachs, he's going to hit again. Yep. In real trouble out of leaping into Sachs. Might be close again going to be down to 100 for two, 300s back. The Austrians move up another one. He'll be no worse than 11th, Marcus Tricol. His best previous result was 12th. Personal best in Samaritz, already sealed for the Austrian. And Dominic Dvorak's helmet has got a lot of forehead beating on cows this weekend. Yeah, and they're touching the wall coming out of wall and then drifting away from Snake One and here late coming out of leap, drifting away from the entrance of Gunther Sachs. And that mistake off leap, that's what did for them. Otherwise, they would have been in the lead. Marcus Tricol is the leader, 10 down, 10 to go from Dominic Dvorak and Yun Jong Won of Korea. We see the British sled still lying there. Brad unable to start the second heat with back pain. 
Yeah, that's a real shame because they've been having such a good season. Luckily now there is a week off competition before we go to Segulda for the two-man races. I'm not sure if they were planning to go or not, um, but uh, most people are hoping to get two or three days sliding in Altenburg, and that's not a place you want to have a bad back either, is it? No, I heard they are going straight to Segulda because they've never been there, so they're right. going to have no, two, no, he did tell me that, yeah. two weeks uh, of, uh, of sliding in Segulda, but it's a, a very long drive first to, to get there. Yeah. Well, he'll probably be spending a lot of time face down on a physio's table between now and getting into the uh, truck tomorrow. Down there, a lot of uh, Swiss colours and lots of fans at the Horseshoe Bar. It is the most famous bobsleigh corner of them all, isn't it, Horseshoe? And, uh, and there's still a real signature curve on any track anywhere. And it's a very fun <laughs> yeah. curve to drive. Yeah. <laughs> really nice feeling shooting out of that, uh, that high points, trying to take all the speed with you going into telephone. A few Lochner fans down at the finish line there. And in the uh, yellow jacket, the boss of Ideal. You also saw Hansi's dad there as well, waving to the camera. And Marcus Treichel, second from the right, and his crew. So they're having a good time in the leader's box. Marcus Treichel, Marcus Gluck, Sebastian Mitterer, and Christian Huber. And lots of fans up at the start as ever up on the hillsides. Great place to come and watch racing. You're in the middle of nature. You can hear the birds tweeting and then the bobsleds whistle by. And a lot of the time, Anne, it actually it catches you by surprise. You don't hear them coming a long way away like you do on an artificial concrete track that sort of shudders and vibrates. It is very different and especially uh, the skeleton sleds. Yep. They're so quiet when we are track walking uh, before our training. We walk on the banquinas on the mm. walls next to the track sometimes we get so surprised when a yeah. skeleton passes by you don't hear them coming it's so different than artificial tracks Samaritz in Switzerland, the final four-man bobsleigh World Cup of the BMW IBSF season. Ten sleds to decide the destiny of the Crystal Globe. Martin Haven and Anne van Nieuwenhuis watching the action with bated breath trackside. Marcus Treichel of Austria, our current leader in a career high. And next up is Alexei Stulnev. Well, Stulnev with a string of top six finishes this season, has never had a four-man medal. 5-12, touches the wall and breaks into a skid after that hit. And that's translating into his lower velocity, only fifth fastest velocity of the fastest start so far. Didn't race here last season in four-man. His best result here, a fifth position in 2017, three years ago. And a touch on the wall there, coming out of wall, but stayed on the right side going into snake. The gap when he sat down over Trichel was 24 hundreds. It's seven hundreds as he heads to Horseshoe. Nice he middle line oh. to hold, but it's a very low line in Horseshoe, and that's not going to bring him a lot of speed. 107 to 108 top speed. He's, he's going to drop into the red. Yeah, he's already behind by seven hundreds now. Half a kilometer per hour down on the Korak, who has the highest speed at that point. Dropping out there. Just what we saw from Maxim Anginov. Slow all the way down the mountain until the bottom of the track. Decent enough speed there, but not enough to catch Trikel at the line. Surely, no. 800s back. Trikel is in the top 10. And drops behind Korak as well. Yeah. So nine to go. Stulnev will be no worse than 12th position. But Alexei Stulnev, his World Cup best here, ninth place in 2017. Here, high on that first kink, pushes him to the wall and then breaks into the skid. Here, coming out of wall with the right pressure, but then stays with that wall to go early into snake one. And just touching there, coming out of Martino, going uphill. Yeah, well, not so pleased with that one. Second heat that didn't promise as much as the first did, did it? So, nine to go, and again in the top ten, the USA's Hunter Church. Now, although he's raced on this track before in the Worlds in 2018, two years ago it was only in two-man. This is his first four-man race here in Samaritz. But in a European campaign where there were few expectations and a lot of over-delivering, this is another great opportunity for a solid top ten result. He's been getting a lot of top tens in his foreman. Good push, good speed normally from these guys. 508. Voice the wall, that's a great start. Great start and great velocity coming around that first kink. 
Now look, watch, he's, you can see the track that the sleds are dropped into of somebody else's sled. He's just letting it go. Yeah, but you need to be on it to be able to control yeah. it if it would drift out of one of these grooves. Yeah. So Hunter Church, 3600s up on Marcus Trichel. He is building his first heat advantage over the Austrian. And very clean line so far at the top of the track, but then a little long on Dixon, and that's why he broke into the drift. Same skid he had in the first heat. 3500s up, 107.9. Second fastest sled to Mikkel Quonen of Switzerland. High in Shamrock, that's why he hit going into Devil's Dyke. Still three tenths up, 120.3, second quickest. Late there and going late into Gunter Sachs as well. Ooh. Controlled it but breaks into the skid. Surely he's going to have enough to take the lead with eight sleds to go. Hunter Church at the line. Yes, that'll do. 106.09 run compared to 106.08 in the first heat. Well, the track's not giving any mulligans, but it's not taking anything away here either. So, great run. Another top 10 finish for Hunter Church. And a little bit strong on the brakes there. I have to push it a little bit further. And here, coming at a bridge or a leap, and then getting caught late, which means late height, and then hitting that wall and skidding, going down to Martino. Do you, know, right. do you want to know the only result out of the top ten he's had all year in four-man? That was on his home track in Lake Placid where he learned to grow. The first, first, drive, first race of the year, he was 11th. Since then, his worst result is eighth. And those are predominantly on tracks he's never seen in his life. Amazing job from Hunter. Fantastic stuff. So Mikkel Vogt to Switzerland next up. And they will undoubtedly have seen what happened to their teammates. They must forget about that poor load and just drive this all the way down to the first corner. And you can hear all the Swiss bells at the top of the track. Yeah, we Five, don't get four, enough cowbell these days. Just a little touch and a tiny drift, but controlled it. Oh, it took away so much yeah. velocity, though. He's going to have to drive it brilliantly to catch back, back up with 100 Church. Well, he had one whole hundredth of a second in hand. It wasn't tight much. A little jump there going into Snake 2, but already 33 hundreds behind. He's going to have to be brilliant at the bottom of the track and let his whistle accelerate. Well, right now he's going to lose Tiny four, maybe six places. And now it looks like he has stopped the bleeding. 108.1, fastest sled so far. Faster than Mikel Quone and his teammates. Oh. Drift going into Nameless and then late dropping it off. He's coming back a little bit, but he's still Well, the speed a is huge, margin. but a third of a second behind. He's not going to catch Hunter Church at the line. Second fastest sled can't be enough, surely, to close down 3,200s. And it isn't. He halves the gap. But Hunter Church, Jimmy Reed and the boys, another one. Disappointment today in the second heat for both of the Swiss sleds. Drops the third, tied with Dominic Vorak. Yep. Ah, rats. And then here, out of Devil's Dyke, skidding into Nameless. And then that back runner drops off. And then hitting the left wall here, coming out of Portago. Yeah, top half of the track was okay, bottom half was a bit of a nightmare for Mikkel Vogt of Switzerland. So Hunter Church leads with seven to go. And the next sled on ice, incredibly, is Francesco Friedrich, our World Cup points leader, our World Cup Crystal Globe winner in four-man last year and the year before. He must finish in sixth or better if Johannes Lochner wins. Now, that's not guaranteed, but Friedrich knows he must move up. 5.04 start. Touching that left wall and a tiny drift. Well, that's quicker than their first getaway, which was a 5.05. .05. And a tiny drift there, too. Controls it early going into wall. 1900s in front when he sat down, still 1900s in front. The tiniest of touches Ooh. there, and a little abrupt transition. 1700s, the gap over Hunter Church is oh, coming and down. Drifting there too, out of Sunny, skidding from Nash to Dixon. Oh, the big skid! There again. This is 
unbelievable to watch this. Francesco Fruzic's not always the cleanest, but he normally pulls it out of the hat at the bottom. 108 kilometers an hour, very good speed. He is just about holding his first line of first round advantage. Now he's motoring away from Hunter Church. Touching there between three oh, and bridge and skidding again. Can't Settles lose a place really to the American. He cannot lose a place to the American. He's going to be in front of the line, surely, but not by much. Oh, by 3,500. All right. So speed at the bottom. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. One, oh, my heart's in my mouth. 105.89, 400 quicker than his fourth, his first heat. Wow. And we'll have to see if that's enough to get him in a top six position. All right. It's not perfection from Francesco Friedrich, which is so rare. And here we can see coming out of Nash the Dixon drifting while we see the yeah. points to get him to the crystal globe. Yeah. After the first heat, Lochner had one hand on the crystal globe, but... And they're drifting as well. Did you ever see him steer like that in years? Yeah, really trying to get that early entrance yeah. into Gunter Sachs. Okay, so it's now no longer in the hands of Francesco Friedrich. Six sleds decide who gets the crystal globe. And it's only one of them that can win it, realistically. Because for Justin Cripps to take the Crystal Globe, he needs to win the race with neither of his German rivals in the top 15, and that ain't happening. Nico Walter then, sixth place after the first heat, 400s ahead of Francesco Friedrich. Got a 5.09 in the first heat, running it quite long, 5.05, great wow. improvement, and a good, good drive around that first kink. Well, he's already lost Paul Krenz for the rest of the season. His team is not fully fit, but... Great velocity from him, from that team. And they know that the World Championships are on his home track of Altenburg, their home track of Altenburg. They are going to bleed until the World Championships are finished. 900s up. He's doubled his first heat advantage over Francesco. And he's clean coming down to Horseshoe. Medium high line there, good exit. Losing a little bit of speed. Doesn't have the same speed as Francesco at that point of the track. He's Gaps gonna be, have to be very clean there to hold on to his lead. Gaps down to 800s, 119.7. That's a kilometer an hour slower than Friedrich. Friedrich. Great line there going into Gunter Sachs. Oh, he's straight down the tubes. What's the Volvo sled got? Speed. Not great speed. This could be within a hundredth of a second. Unbelievable. He's wow. in front. Now, Friedrich must hope that Lee of China has a horror story. It's out of Francesco's hands. And he had a really great line from Leap to Gunter Sachs and then placed it right in the middle, going downhill to Martino, and that's why he found the speed. There was a big yard hole down there from the crew. Oh, my goodness me. Not a very high line in Horseshoe. Good aerodynamics from the brakeman there. And then coming out. I love the way you just see the driver already as he's going up into Horseshoe. He's looking at the apex. He's looking for where the sled is going to go, not where it wants to go. Nico Walter is our race leader from Francesco Friedrich. Five four-man sleds remain in the hunt for the Crystal Globe. Martin Haven and Anne van Neuenhaus watching the final race of the four-man bobsleigh world cup season in samaritz through our fingers this is ridiculously tense in fifth position li chunjan of china his first ever world cup four-man race he has done precisely five official four-man races in north america and europe cup before now he was ahead of friedrich and walter this is incredible 513. Ah, oh, but Skits there coming out of that first kink. So if he goes behind Valter, it's good for Valter, but it's no use for Friedrich. 1700s back at the moment. Friedrich was 1400s behind at the line. This is the sled that could yet deny Francesco Friedrich the crystal globe. A little touch there coming out of wall, but looks like he has it back under control. 
And he is looking nice, as tidy as the first heat, but he's 23 hundreds back. But already back to 22. And great speed there. Fastest sled. What are they doing with these kids? How are they great doing this? Great line coming out of Devil's Dyke into Nameless. Gaps down to 18 hundreds over Nico Valter. He needs to pull it together here. Little late oh. going into Gunter Sachs. Hits that Big wall. Hit. What speed he got? 11th at the line. I think this is redemption for Francesco Friedrich. He's going to be in third place at the line. He's behind Friedrich by 600s. Nico Valter leads. Francesco breathes again. Goes to talk to Martin Wolf of the German TV broadcaster ZDF. But, that, oh boy, that's Lee. Good. That skid around that first kink is what cost him the top six position here. Yep. But seventh place on his World Cup debut. Unbelievable. Two years ago in the Olympic Games in February, he was a brakeman. Today, he makes a World Cup debut that rocked everybody back. Not just making the field, not just making the top 20. Like he's, he's disappointed, he's heartbroken yeah. not to be in the top five. This is sixth ever race. Long on there, and that's hit, hitting the wall on the left side, breaking through that skid. It cost him some time and speed. And then there, leap to Gunter Sachs, high at the end, hitting that wall. <laughs> <laughs> and a sigh of relief from oh. Francesco to get to Globe. Okay, wow. so now then, it's all about who can do what. Benny Meyer's best ever result was a bronze medal here in 2016. He was 900 out of the medals in the first heat. Oh, 5-12 start and pretty clean. Hits the wall but sets him up straight to the second king. Oh, just avoids the left wall there coming out of that second king. Not the greatest exit speed and already down to 300 advantage over Nico Walter. Little drift there, trying to avoid that wall going into Snake 1. Now, Nico Walter is driving a brand new Valner four-man sled, but Benny Meyer, also in a Valner, had great speed at the bottom of the track. Only 900s in it. And then a good stable line going into Horseshoe. Not the highest, but a good exit. Not the greatest speeds. A little bit down compared to the Chinese sled, who was the fastest there. Drifting from Devil's Deck to Nameless and dropping the back runner there. It's coming back, though. Well, he needs to. He needs to be perfect down here. Oh, just keeps on the left-hand wall, same as Marcus Trichel. How close will he be? He was 1100s back. Is it enough to take the lead from Nico Valter? Not enough, no. He's third behind Friedrich. So Valter moves up. They're looking at a medal, and Benny will be no worse than sixth position. Well, good to see him back from injury. Yep, mostly fit. At, at the top of the field. Not getting a lot of sleep. He and Elizabeth with their <laughs> new baby, Hendrix. And here, out of Devil's Dyke to Nameless, skits, and then he was laid there, high, dropping that back runner. And then here, trying to stay with that left wall, going from Leap to Gunter Sachs. So, Benny there with the Austrians. And there's her wife, Elizabeth. Three to go. Who is going to take the medals here? Nico Walter leads, and two of our preview of our remaining three drivers have been previous medalists here, including this man. Oscar's Kubermanis took the bronze last year. He won here four seasons ago in 2017. Five flat in the first heat. Star record. Let's see if they can get it in the four seconds. Oh, you know they want to. That's what brake men do. Oh, ridiculous. 97, but hits and skits. It is so hard to get that sled around with that velocity. Yeah. And that and mistake cost him a little bit of velocity compared to Nico Walter, who was a fastest sled there. Well, his advantage over Nico Walter from the first heat was 28 hundreds of a second. It's 35 hundreds at the moment. Will come down a fraction. No, he's stopped the, dri the bleeding drift already. There, going late into Nash and drifting to Dixon as well. But then gets it back under control. Looks a little unstable, but gets it in the middle. Again, I think a lot of sleds are just tracking over those tram lines yeah. down that straight. Great speed coming out of Shamrock into Devil's Dyke. Fastest nice of all, he is heading to the medals, but can he claim a second really win? Lines there. Two tenths covered the top three. 
just about gets it clean down the straight. Top speed of all. Kiba Manis is going to lead by over four tenths of a second. That's a huge run. 105.64 for Oscar's Kiba Manis. Great run from the Latvian. Just three hundreds of a second off his first heat. And a 97 push. Wow. That's a great shot from the guys. That is a huge shout for a second career gold medal and a second career gold medal here in San Moritz. But it looked like the number two gang came out with a little bit of pain. Well, again, nice if you want to give your driver every chance of a win. And you can see him moving the runners, yep. trying to avoid that left wall coming out of that first kink. And then here, a little bit of pressure, dragging his back end. Yep. Just avoided getting kicked into a skid there on that wall by Monty's bolt. Two to go, Justin Cripps of Canada. Well, he had a decent enough day in the top six in the two-man yesterday, but Cripps has not often got on with his track. His career high here, 11th place, and that was back in 2016. He did a great job in the two-man, had a brilliant drive in the first heat in yep. his four-man today. And he is in with a chance to win his fifth four-man World Cup race. Running a very long 505, touching a tiny skid, 200 improvement over their first heat. But because the Latvians started a fraction faster, Cripps is in the red. But as you said, he drove just beautifully in the first run. And he was the fastest sled of all. So let's see if he can reproduce that. Well, you could hear the little rattles there through Snake 1 and 2, but he's neat and tidy out of Sunny and through Nash and Dixon. Just a tiniest skid into Dixon. Almost ignores the corner up to Horseshoe. A great looking run so far, and he's back in the green. And great the speed, speed is there. awesome. A little long, but drops it in the middle. Very good speed, good looking lines at the bottom. Ooh, and they're a little late going into lead, but gets good pressure early into Gunter Sachs. Shoots that straight away, going down to Martino. Highest speed of everyone. He's having a brilliant run again. Fantastic effort from Justin wow. Cripps. He takes the lead, 105.56. His first heat was a 105.56. Good job that from Justin Cripps. That is a great day at the office for Justin Cripps of Canada. Last Canadian to take a medal here. I looked a long way back, but actually it was only two years ago. Chris Spring, Brian Barnett, Lascelles Brown and Neville Wright took bronze here two years ago. But Cripps, what a drive today. Really kept it low there around Dixon. Set him up straight in the straightaway, heading up to Horseshoe. Medium high line there, and then he's going to turn the set, bring it back to neutral before the exit so he can be nice and straight diagonally going to telephone. Good well, job from the Canadians. Yeah, team. absolutely great job. Justin Cripps, Ryan Summer, Cam Stones, and Ben Coquell lead. OK, so even if Johannes Lochner wins, Francesco Friedrich will be no worse than fifth, so Friedrich will take the crystal glow. But yesterday in the two-man, Johannes was in a different class, and in the first heat today, he was again. Let's see what he and Florian Bauer, Christopher Weber, and new boy on the back handles to be a Schneider, his first day racing with the team. Now this lineup, what have they got to start? 5.02, another stunningly fast start. And a very clean run around that first kink. Ignores the second completely. <laughs> Just drives it around. A little, little drift there from being dragged along one of the lines there in the straightaway. Little Touch snap. the wall and an abrupt transition from snake one to snake two, and he's losing some speed there. Was 1500s ahead of Justin Cripps, now only 900s up. And a little tap, Dixon, tap, and a skid. Oh. Low line in Horseshoe, a little early onto telephone. But he had superb Not speed at the bottom. Speed, he's 2.2Ks no. down. Cripps might take this one. Cripps might win his fifth career he's gold medal. Dropping. 18 hours oh. back. Where's this gone? His runner choice worked superbly in the first heat. Maybe the track's not up to it. Tiny drift there as well. He's not going to be first. He's not going to be second. Is he still going to be in the medals? Is there a medal for Lockner? He's third of the line. Cripps wins it. <laughs> Justin Cripps, his fifth career four-man win, his third this season. He won the opening two and the season finale.
And Johannes Lochner, the comfortable first round leader in bronze behind Oscar's Kibermanis. Ah, uh, rats. Gold two years ago, silver last year, bronze this year, but still a big smile on his face. And here, late high, and Dixon touching the wall, breaking into the skid to horseshoe. Not a very high line there. It doesn't give him a lot of speed coming out of horseshoe. Yeah, the skid going in there, prejudiced it. Great wow. job from the Canadians. Great job. There's they ben were Coquel. so excited for a medal last week oh, in the four-man in the European track. Now to get a win on a European track, they will be absolutely thrilled. What a way to finish the four-man season off. The only remaining race in four-man, the World Championships in Altenburg. And Justin Cripps will be... Wait, Sam Ritz, I can't believe it. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> well, you know, it's an absolutely top draw pair of drives from Justin Cripps here. Absolutely. Just let his sled fly. He had brilliant lines down the track. Most stable sled we've seen of everyone. Just nice down the middle. Good hype there. Not the highest, but just excellent speed all the way down the track. Fossil sled in the first run, in the second run. Shoot that straight away twice. It's just a brilliant run from a Canadian driver and a good push from his team. And Cripps, his previous career high here, 11th place. Wow. He's possibly just beaten that <laughs> out of the park. Fifth win of his career, Oscars keeper Manis again in the medals ahead of Hansi Lochner. And fifth is enough, only just for Francesco Friedrich, as he claims the World Cup Crystal Globe. The best four-man driver of the season across all eight races for the third straight year. Two more to do before he catches Alex. Alexander Zubkov as a five-time winner, and then he starts making all new records. Well, goodness, I'm not sure we expected the day we got today when we woke up, did we? But that's one of the great things about racing in general and racing in Samaritz in particular is you can't predict what's going to happen. Very surprising result to have the three German sleds in third, fourth, and fifth. Um, that's a big upset. And then Swiss sled, Michael Vogt in 10th place uh, on his home track. Maybe would have expected him to be a little better. Mm -hmm. Too bad for the other Swiss driver, Conan, to, to get that mishap at the start. The guy's not getting in. Um, he would have been better than 19th, obviously, yeah. if he wouldn't yeah. have that mistake. Um, Brad Hall being out by injury should have been uh, competing for another top 10 result. Yeah. And, uh, well, he didn't have a great first run, but uh, the way that he climbed up oh, as a former world champion. Uh, Swiss driver down there, Fabian, Fabian Meyer. Meyer. Yeah. Yeah. European champion as well. Yeah, absolutely. Junior world champion and uh, long-time driver for Swiss bobsledding. And lots of familiar faces around and about. Well, Oscar's keeper Manis, silver medal. Oh, he no. is waiting for that win. Well, waiting again. Yeah, now four seasons ago, but he knows what the Canadians are feeling right now, doesn't he? If you get your first win in Samaritz, it's like winning Wimbledon, it's like winning the, winning the Indy 500. In this sport, this is the place. Uh, all the other tracks have their own challenges. Some of them are harder, a lot harder to drive. Some of them are a little less frustrating, Anne, but <laughs> this place is where it all started. A nearly, uh, we're getting on for nearly a century and a half of official racing here, never mind all the hooligan holiday makers uh, of the uh, early 1800s sliding down the road on equipment they possibly borrowed from the hotel kitchens nobody can say but uh, this is what it's all about it's still the only natural track on the planet it's a very very different place to anywhere else but what a track to win on the four-man bobsleigh World Cup season is completed. Francesco Friedrich is our Crystal Globe winner from Johannes Lochner, who made it as tight as possible. And Justin Cripps vaults up into third position in the last couple of weeks. He takes his third win of the season to finish in third place in the overall season rankings. All that remains for four-man racing is the World Championships in the final weekend of February in Altenburg. But before then, they will head to the final World Cup 
race weekend, which is two-man only in Segulda in Latvia in a couple of weeks. And Van Nienhaus, it was a nail-biting run into the flag, wasn't it? Particularly for Francesco Friedrich, too low in the first heat for what he needed to do. But in the end, it came good for him and even better for Justin Cripps. Very exciting racing, very tight racing. This is what we've been asking for all season. Uh, people dropping from first to third, uh, climbing up from third to first. It's It's been a great day of racing, and especially for Justin Cripps. Wonderful drives, good pushes from his, from his team. He just showed us how you should drive this track. And, uh, congratulations to him. Well, their focus all season has been on the World Championships to get funding for next year's programme, and they've taken the hits. They've made decisions to try new things that didn't work, and occasionally they felt really like they were starting to lose their way, but it's all coming good. The starts are getting stronger. The driving and the equipment, the setup, everything is starting to gel. And today they claim win number three of the season. And magnums of Cordon Rouge all the way round. Congratulations to Justin Cripps, Oscars Kiebermanis, Johannes Lochner and their teams. Our podium in the final. BMW IBSF four-man bobsleigh World Cup race of the season. From Anne Van Nienhaus and me, Martin Haven, thank you for being with us here in Switzerland. We will see you in two weeks from now in Segulda in Latvia for the World Cup season finale and then two weekends of World Championship racing that follow. But from everybody here in Samaritz, it's a very breathless goodbye. We'll see you in two weeks.